All right, it's very important here to stop, wait, and wait. That's how you cross the street and make. She did it. She followed the rules and it worked. I'm gonna try it out again. It works. We're Chris and Melissa. Back in 2020, we left our empty nest to embark on a slow travel adventure, living in 12 cities in 12 months. This month, we're in city number 11, Waldeboro, Maine. What's it like to live here? Well, it is a sort of place where you might run into an unexpected delay. The big question though, does the charm of mellow mid-coast Maine meet our location needs? First, we should tell you what our location needs checklist includes. Nature, restaurants, outdoor exercise, fun activities, cost of living, climate, and serenity. And treats. Mid-Coast Maine is full of fun adventures. We tried lobstering in Portland. Then we went sailing in Camden. We even went 15 miles out into the ocean to try some whale watching. That was a little nerve wracking. And we went for a two day hiking adventure in Acadia National Park. Do you guys recognize this? Always in danger, always. Run, Forrest, run! That's pretty nice. This spot over here, Narrow's Tavern, has become our go-to pub. Narrow's Tavern claims to be the best little tavern in Maine. We couldn't agree more. The food was delicious and the service was great. The steak wrap was quite tasty. Judy's chicken sandwich is my favorite. Yet again, another amazing meal. I think this is like the fourth time that we've been here. Everything's been top notch every time. Are you excited, Chris? Time for donuts. They look open. I'm super excited. That was actually unexpected at how amazingly beautiful those donuts looked. Oh my gosh, it's so hard to choose which to have. Super cool to know that apart from the sprinkles, everything that they have there is locally sourced. Oh, that's cool. Oh my gosh, this is so heavy. I don't know if we'll be able to eat it all in one city. <laughs> no. I probably could, but then I wouldn't feel good about it. <laughs> right, I still have to work out today. When we were in the donut shop, they were saying that the rhubarb was kind of flying off the shelves. So that they have two rhubarb donuts and I figured I had to get the rhubarb fritter because I love apple fritters. Mm. 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 That's a lovely tasting fritter. Um, I'm gonna try to get some of the rhubarb, so sorry guys. This might be messy. Mm. I used to have a lot of rhubarb when I was a kid. I haven't had much of it as an adult. It's good stuff. Sticking with the rhubarb theme, I decided to try a rhubarb crisp. Now, I didn't have rhubarb as a kid. It's something I've become a fan of a bit as an adult. That's a good technique there. Ooh, there's some creamy deliciousness. Check this out. Wait, wait. Here's that oh creamy deliciousness gosh. right there. Okay, so I'm gonna set this side down. Ooh. Mayhem, it is mayhem. I'd like to do donut theater, but this might not be the ideal situation. I think these donuts, it, they're super classy. So it'd have to be classy donut theater. Well, if my voice isn't classy, I don't know what is by God. 
They're messy donuts, but <laughs> well worth it. Mm. Oh my gosh. There's so much goodness going on there. What is it, like oatmeal or something that does the crisp? And then the the rhubarb is, it just, it tastes so fresh. It actually tastes healthy. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> okay, well, sugary, but healthy. And then this cream, I need another bite. Okay. So I think what you're, the term you're looking for, it tastes really fresh. Mm, mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I guess fresh is usually synonymous with healthy, right? So mm -hmm. we're having healthy donuts. It tastes so fresh. It actually tastes healthy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. It's got to be whipped cream. I don't know. You want to bite? You no, that's, I think it's whipped cream. You just dripped all over me. I mean. It's okay. It's a good time here. We couldn't just do one donut. So I got another donut and it's the caramel cream because I love caramel and I love cream donuts. And look at this guy. It's going to be a mess. When that caramel's really good, it's not going to be pretty. Here we go. Mmm. Sorry. Oh my God, that's good. <laughs> so much caramel. Yes, these are some amazing donuts. I went with the maple donut. I'm obsessed with maple, as you might know from our time in Quebec City. And this is locally sourced maple. I'm not gonna be able to rip this like I did the other one. Just gonna have to go in this way. Mm. That is the most delicate tasting maple I've ever had. Usually like a maple donut, it's like this overpowering glaze. This is like refined next level maple glaze. This is fantastic. Oh my God, they're they're all amazing, but I think I'm her favorite. <laughs> it's just a sneaking suspicion I have. <laughs> I think we've got to give a thumb up a bump, big time. Hey there, how are you? Um, I'm a Orca Stone and I'm kind of a big deal. I'm <laughs> Nice um, Nice to meet you, Ruckus. Well, I'm Carmel, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, thumb up a bump at Ruckus Donuts. It, We're having yeah. too much fun. Mm. <laughs> it's great. So as we've been driving around Maine, we've been seeing these things about whoopie pies. Like they're really popular. Try these whoopie pies, try these. So we did some research and we found out where whoopie pies started. At least that's what we're hearing. So we're going to trace them out. That's right. The first whoopie pie was sold at Labadee's Bakery in 1925. Their recipe has never changed. Neither has their location. We're at home now. We have Lavadee's Bakery goodies to try. Whoopie pies are Maine's official treat. We needed to have Maine's official treat. How can we be in Maine and not have their official treat? It's probably against the law, don't you think? Well, to leave without trying it? Yeah, oh. it's probably, we'd probably be arrested at the border, so. Then, if it is the law, I am so happy about <laughs> it because, oh my gosh, I haven't tasted it yet, but it looks delicious. Wait, just, just to, okay. One thing I do want to bring up is I thought in the last place, we overdid it on treats. In Quebec City, there were so many tasty treats and we were joking about oh, putting on 10 pounds. I got down to Maine, it's like, we're gonna be fine. We're not gonna have treats. We've had so many treats in Maine. And then the whoopie pie. Oh, we haven't had so many. We had donuts. Yeah, exactly. So That's not so many, that's donuts. You know, you don't have to argue with me. I just want to... Well, you don't need to like say I that just, we've had so you know many what? treats when it's just been donuts. Here's the deal, I feel bad because I've been having a lot of treats. Maybe not Melissa, <laughs> but I've been having a lot of treats. Okay, and here might be part of Chris's issue. I need to show this. I have to show this. Chris asked me if I would share my whoopie pie, and I said, mm, I'm not promising that. Logical thing to do would be to get your own whoopie pie. What does Chris get? I got my whoopie pie. And a Bismarck and a cream filled horn or whatever that's called. This is what I have to do. I have to test these things out. I, I couldn't just let them sit there. I'm dedicated to this, so. I just hope that the person who invented whoopie pies isn't the same person who invented the whoopie cushion. That's, that's what I hope. 
<laughs> well, that wouldn't, it wouldn't be good, you know? Really? They're so Smells soft. Good. They're so soft. They smell good. Mmm. Mmm. Better than a s'more. Mm. Definitely better mm. than a s'more. Marshmallowy goodness. I love the powdered sugar element and the chocolate. It actually, these remind me of, I think, they're too fluffy to be chocolate crinkle cookies. My mom used to do those with the powdered sugar on top, mm -hmm. but they kind of remind me of it, just not quite texture wise. But it's like light, it's, it's almost like a cake. The cookies are almost like a cake, aren't Oh yeah, they? it's definitely like a cake. It doesn't taste spongy and sticky like marshmallows do. Yeah, definitely not. So, I, I, I'm gonna give this one, you're gonna give it oh, a thumb up. Oh, I'm up a bumpy it. It's, it's delicious. And we gotta say it. Whoopee, that was good. <laughs> That's like, right. we have to say what? We did our thumb up a bump. Whoopee. Whoopee. Yes. <laughs> There's actually this awesome little pizza place in Waldeboro, so we're gonna go to it. We're going to Odd Ale Wives. Yeah, they make their own beer, their own pizza. We went there once already. It's pretty good. Come on, we'll show you. Odd Ale Wives Brewery is housed in a renovated 1820s barn and is surrounded by over 22 acres of gardens and forests. This is such a nice, laid back, spacious place. I love that I can hear the birds. The breeze comes by now and again. It reminds me of being at like a friend's farm or something and just hanging out, out in the country, drinking a beer gonna have some pizza it's good hey hun I'll wash the beer okay ready for some pizza this guy is ready for some pizza I got their vegetarian special which has like a walnut uh, pesto. It's so hot to hold, it's seriously so hot. I'm gonna just sample the crust for a moment. Mm. It's delicious. It's like there's this wonderful creaminess to the cheese, the the pesto is like light and earthy and then with the olives and the mushrooms, it's delicious. So I gotta build your own pizza. Uh, so I went with pepperoni and red sauce, olives and uh, sweet onion. Mm, that's a good pizza. It's a much, the pepperoni is a much different flavor than I'm used to with pepperoni. Mm, really good. I can't describe it though. It was almost like a smoky pepperoni flavor. I keep working on this. Okay, so this is some kind of main-based top or beverage. Or I'm gonna try a moxie. They say it's an acquired taste. It smells kind of licorice-like. Yeah, kind of licorice. -y. Not bad. It's sweet. It's not, it's not as bad as I first thought. You went from being disgusted, like, oh wait, maybe not bad. It's that first thing that hits the back of the mouth was just like, mm, and then, hi. It's like the pop version of Jägermeister. has just declared her love for this game. I could potentially get par, but I'm not gonna get too excited about it because my putty needs some work. <laughs>
people wave around here, from their cars and their front porches. We've chatted with neighbors, and we've watched foxes and turkeys cross this road. Walderboro, Maine might be our kind of place. That's a first. It's like a bumblebee tree. Never seen that before. Maine, you're pretty amazing. Do you want to see my dream house? Is it a dream house in Maine? If we were to move to Maine, this is the house I want to live in. It's pricey, but it's not crazy. And it's a little crazy. Four bedrooms, four baths, 3,203 square feet. Look at that. Okay, let me just check this out right here. What is it? What the? Uh... <laughs> okay, that's... I have good taste. You do. That's My grandmother a... always said I had good taste. You do. Um, your husband, I know it. You have good taste. Taste usually costs a lot, so. Honey, this includes having permission to become a member of a golf and tennis and fitness club that's oh. in the neighborhood. There's a list of 80 people who want to be able to. We don't have to wait on the list if we get this house. Uh, we love well, golf and tennis. Then that certainly makes sense. Yeah. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Oh, that kitchen. So let's get serious now. All right. All right? Cost of living in Midcoast, Maine. How do you think it ranks? It is a little pricey. Really? You think Midcoast? That's a surprise. The main thing in Midcoast, Maine is that most of the properties are on lots of acres. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a house plus 33 acres or you're getting a house plus 90 plus acres. The one closest to our home in Rochester is on 33 plus acres that I could find. It is more reasonable than a million to five. It is $649,900. Oh my golly. It's a nice house. Yeah. It's not the so, other house. So I wonder how much more expensive it is because of all that land. Oh, I think that's a big contributing factor for sure. And do you think that they there are restrictions from dividing up the land? Oh, here's one thing I was reading about Maine, especially in rural Maine, is that there aren't a lot of building rules. And that would make sense because all the roads are windy. Uh, there's all kinds of different structures and buildings on properties. There's old, it's all over the place, but it looks cool. I kind of like it. Oh, I love it. And driving along any road in Maine, there are several businesses that you yeah. can just go to. They're, they're everywhere. There was one love that it. I found closer in price to what we paid for our house in Rochester. And it's in downtown Waldeboro but it's like twice the size of our house in Rochester. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay, let's see it. But it's a lack of land, so I think that land definitely makes a difference. It's 450,000, that's huge. Oh, wow. Here, oh, here, let me scroll through the pictures though so you can see it oh, from all pictures. sides. And look at that. Look at that back. Ooh. I mean, we could open up a bed and breakfast in that house, I think. Life pivot. The Chris plus Melissa bread and breakfast. Bread and breakfast? <laughs> That's what I have in my mind. The Chris plus Melissa bed and breakfast and bread. In Waldeboro, Maine, we will serve fresh baked bread every morning. Have you ever been to a bread and <sighs> Here's also a more realistic one and one that I think we would like because it's in Scarborough, Maine, which is a suburb of Portland, which would be a great place for us. And this is very similar to our house in Rochester, except it's a uh, two-story. It's a little bit more, it but not crazy. It plain. Well, but it also looks nice. Oh, it does look nice inside there. That's still kind of expensive. Our house in Rochester looked plain. Like, yeah, true, true. So, all right. So it seems comparable to where we came from in Minnesota. 
but far less expensive than like Whistler or San Diego uh, or Vancouver, North Vancouver. So, Right. Not only on housing expenses, but also in the grocery store. Things weren't crazy high in the grocery store. It was all pretty reasonable. Another cost of living thing that was definitely thumb up a bump was the cost of an evening out at Nero's Tavern. Oh yeah. It was like always $100. That's it. There was live music. The quality of the food was amazing. And service. The same meal and experience in Vancouver would have been 180. In San Diego, it would have been 180. It was awesome. <laughs> Maine can be foggy and the winters are long. Many might not like that. Check out my other accessory today. <laughs> but we're from Minnesota. We think we'd be just fine here. Main state slogan is the way life should be. Staying here in this place with this backyard, it's hard to disagree. We've had such a great time in Maine. Check out our adventures. Oh, they've been so fun and exciting. We're here. <laughs> I, I don't have anything more.